Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. We're back with another five weekly favorites. First, let's talk about our two show favorites mm -hmm. from the week because we don't physically have those to talk about, but we've been loving two shows. One of them is Love is Blind on Netflix. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. Um, I mean, by now, the finale has happened, the reunion has happened, mm -hmm. so I'm sure you know all the details like we do. Um, but it's basically a social experiment type dating show hosted by Nick and Vanessa Lachey. And they take, how many people was it total? I think they, I want to say it was like 50 people total. Lots of people. And they basically but they didn't have, film everyone. No, they basically have, um, well, the guys live in one house, the girls live in another. And each day they go on, like, dates in these pods. So, um, like, the girl will be on one side mm -hmm. of the pod, the guy will be on the other, and there's a wall between them. So they can talk, and it's like a very cozy environment but they can't see each other. Um, I don't know how long the dates were. I'm guessing like an hour. They said like in the beginning they were anywhere from like 15 minutes to half an hour because they had so many people to cycle through. And then once they found people they wanted to like actually date, they could be like anywhere from an hour to people. So they've had like four hour dates. Okay, so I mm -hmm. think like as the show progressed, the contestants were able to say like who they wanted to continue mm -hmm. going on dates with and who they didn't want to. Um, so basically, by the end of it, they're supposed to be engaged, or they have the opportunity to get engaged. Well, the end of, like, cycle one. Cycle there was, like, one. There was this whole, like, plan. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, it was actually, like, a scientific experiment. Yeah, so by the end of, like, the mm -hmm. first portion, mm -hmm. which I think was ten days, um, mm -hmm. you had the opportunity to get engaged, and then if you got engaged, all the engaged couples went on a vacation in Mexico. There were six couples total. Yes. And then from there... Wait, no. More than that, right? No, I think only six. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then from there, um, if... Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, they said there were eight, but they only filmed six. Oh, really? Did they say there were two other engaged couples, but they didn't, they couldn't have enough, I read an interview, there wasn't enough camera time to give everyone, like, a storyline, so they cut two couples out. So were those couples together? Yeah, they were together. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so then from Mexico, if, like, their relationship lasts through that vacation, then they were living all the couples so five of them went on to live in mm -hmm. an apartment complex together um like so they didn't live in the same apartment they lived no, in, but in the same complex. Yeah, complex yeah it and, was crazy um, so to see like how these couples did living together like how real married life would uh -huh. be and, and it I, took place in atlanta yeah. and that's where everyone was from so the interesting thing was that everyone could still go to work and like live their lives mm -hmm. like unlike the bachelor where everyone's flown to la and you film like at all these different locations yeah like, and you're very like in atlanta they talked about being in a bubble in the pods but then once they got back into the real world like it was being in the real world whereas the bachelor they're in this bubble for months yeah. at a time like where of course you're gonna fall in love in those situations and then you have to snap back to reality mm -hmm. like quick this was more of a gradual thing but they only had two weeks i believe from getting back from mexico before the weddings yeah which is insane and mm -hmm. i mean it, it, this won't really spoil it but two couples end up getting married and are still married to this day like a year and a half later yeah um so really amazing i feel like it worked really well it was so interesting to watch it was like, like it's so it was like to crazy watch. television, but also it was just nuts because they're like real people with real emotion, and it they was were like, really in love. Yeah, like we're not. I feel like on the back to like Carly said, you're in your own bubble. Where like I feel like a lot of those people aren't in love. They just love what they're doing, like traveling the mm -hmm. world. Like of course, like anyone would be heightened emotions in that situation. Whereas and this all, was like all, more real life. In the Bachelor, all the girls have one option. Like this yeah. was like you have so many options and you, so when they chose to like keep dating um each person it was like an actual decision it wasn't like the yeah. bachelor where like you're thrown in and expected to like this person yeah exactly mm -hmm. so really interesting show definitely check it out if you haven't watched it and then our other favorite show um of the week is mcmillions oh my gosh oh no we're not behind we're not behind sorry yeah. um it's on HBO. It's a docu-series about the McDonald's Monopoly game and the fraud. Basically, if you didn't know, I did not know this, and I don't remember it being reported in the news. Well, but I looked this up, too, because we were just mind-blown. And I was like, why didn't we hear about this? And I guess, like, the trial for this whole situation happened on September 10th of 2001. So then after September 11th happened, like, the news coverage just completely halted. Yeah, but I don't halted. think... Even a trial is usually, what, like, a year later? So it's just... Oh, weird. no, it was, like, a week later. Because oh. remember, this happened in 2001. Oh. In August. So it was just... 
I think like there was some preliminary news about it, but it wasn't like blown up until around that September time frame. And yeah. then obviously the news coverage stopped. But so basically, nuts. basically there was no real winner of the McDonald's Monopoly, like the million dollar winners or the high prize winners. Some of them were like 100,000, even 10,000 winners. Yeah. They were all rigged. Like there was no real well, there legitimate was some. winner. It wasn't all, but it was, it went deep. It was like for like a decade. No one. Did they say 12 years? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? This so mob sad. family and like this other guy. I don't want to give it away, but basically, yeah. basically it follows that whole case from beginning to end, like how it started, how the game pieces got stolen, um, which was the most interesting. Like when you're watching the first episode, you're just like, who was getting these game pieces? Yeah, like how did this, this even make happen? sense? It was a very secure, um, like strategy. Like they had yeah, everything the FBI, in place. Yeah, the FBI had to um, basically like go to McDonald's and say. Like, we want you to run the game again so we can catch these individuals. But then at that point, they didn't know if the person was in the McDonald's corporation. So it could have backfired mm -hmm. completely. Thankfully, McDonald's wasn't involved at all and did not know, which was also really, really sad um, that this happened to them. But now I hope with, like, this documentary, maybe they'll bring it back and, like, actually give some people a chance. Yeah, that's true, because that game was a blast. Yeah. If you guys remember the Monopoly game from McDonald's, it was so much fun. I loved, I feel like um, there were lots of, like, free ice cream cones, free yeah. apple pies, which is, like, the things we like there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was I, just, does anyone remember the magazine portions, though? Because that's how a lot of this, like, trickery was done, was through the magazine game pieces, which I don't even remember no. that. I thought the well, only we were way... Young, we didn't re yeah, we magazines. were young. I thought the only way that you could get the game pieces was on the McDonald's items, like the fries and the drinks. Yeah. But apparently there were magazines that had the pieces also. Yeah, so it's just so interesting. Um, at the time we're filming this, there's one episode left. It's a six-part series. So it's really easy to get through. There's also a what podcast. We finished it. No, there's one left. Oh, my right? God. Wait. No, we finished it. Oh, we did finish it? Yeah, we finished it. It was good. <laughs> Okay, I guess we did finish it. Why did I think we were still having Remember it ended? Because there was there was someone that was like, not an informant, but a... Oh, there was an informant. We still don't know who it was, though. Yeah, they, call, they called the FBI with the anonymous tip, mm -hmm. um, which kind of threw this whole thing off. And, like, this person... Like, they would have basically never known this was happening if this person had not come forward. Yeah. So that's, like, kind of how the docuseries ended was... Um, talking about like who do you think this person was and yeah. it's just it's so interesting but i think the thing i love about it the most are the people involved in this like characters from, yes there's like an agent um matthews from the fbi he's such a character there's one um wife of one of the criminals she is such a character and so it's like all these personalities intertwined like and even the like criminal fictional film when you're does. watching it like does. are these people real like even, and they're 100 percent real and a lot of them were like drug traffickers and even they they're charming like it's just yeah. so crazy like yeah. these people and we heard there's gonna be a movie yeah we heard there's gonna be a so movie. hopefully these like characters are actually real characters in the movie because their personalities are next level seriously and, and need to be i do want to also recommend the podcast because i thought that the podcast was kind of like if you don't have hbo you can listen to the podcast mm -hmm. but it, it complements it so basically they say like listen to episode one then listen to episode one of the podcast because they have the same names of the episodes like because each episode kind of focuses on a new person or a new mm -hmm. like progression in the case um whereas the podcast is the same but then they give you more background information uh and a lot of it was actually so interesting and i don't know why i didn't make it into the series so highly recommend the long episodes i'm sure they just couldn't put more in yeah it was so good okay we, we'll stop rambling about all the television we watch um next up we actually were invited to go to the Bosha launch event for the serum. So we're kind of like doing a three in one here. Mm -hmm. um, but they launched three new serums the Bosha Vitamin B12 Hydration Booster Serum, which is this one. And we also have the Bosha Vitamin C with Caviar Lime Booster Serum, which is the green one. And then the Bosha Vegan Collagen Booster Serum. And I have been loving these so much. Yeah, I haven't tried the vitamin C because I have very sensitive skin. And I've been using that one the most, actually. Oh, there's natural um, AHAs in it, too. I just, my skin is so sensitive now, I'm scared. But I've been using these two. This one is my favorite. I love it. And it's really cool because it's, um, I believe, 70%. It's a biphase. Yeah, oil. Is that how it works? And then 30% so. of, like, oh, yeah. 70% oil, 30% water, and then the actives is like the vitamin B12. And yeah, you can shake it up. It's really cool. And then it has this nifty packaging, airtight. Um, 
Yeah, I love, I love this one. I feel like, but I don't think you can use it as a serum. There's so much oil in it, you have to put it on top. Yeah, I use this as my last step in my routine. Um, I think, I, so I've been breaking out a lot and I don't know if it's from this. I don't, I don't suspect it is um, because it's a really like, even though it's thicker than like squalane or any of those thinner oils, it's still not heavy in my opinion, but it does really nourish the skin. Like, but you can feel it. You can feel mm -hmm. it. You can feel it's it. It's one of those types. I, I've used it during the day though, too, under makeup. Oh, and really? Yeah, and it's been fine. So I really love this one. Like I've used it quite a bit and I'm really impressed. It's really good. I also like um, the amount of product this dispenses. I feel like one pump is almost enough one for me. One pump is totally fine. Of all of these. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they this recommend. One? Like for the vitamin C, how many pumps do they say? Um, do, do, do. apply two to three pumps. Like, I feel like that's kind of a lot, right? Yeah. For the collagen one, this one has such a nice texture. Yes. It's like a lightweight moisturizer, but like it soaks into your skin. Yeah, I use the collagen one at night, mm -hmm. and then I usually use the vitamin C one during the day because I use retinol at night, so I don't want to use vitamin C too. Um, but they both have such a good texture. They both yeah. feel like very lightweight. They, they all three have good texture because I like this one too. Yeah, but that one's just very different than these two. Yeah, I feel like is. these two have a similar texture mm -hmm. where they um they just soak into the skin nicely. They're very fluid. Um, they almost have like a stick to them. Not in a bad way though. Like kind of like you can feel a barrier happening. Yeah. Um, I and this vitamin C. So I can't speak on if it's brightening as of yet because I have only been using this for a couple weeks. Um, but it's not. <laughs> As I was saying, um, this isn't too harsh on my skin like most vitamin C's I've tried. And also, none of these serums have made me break out, or I don't really break out from serums, but I either get like an eczema flare like, up yeah, or I get reaction. texture. Some sort of reaction from a lot of serums. Me too. Like, I don't know and why. I haven't had issues either. Like I said, I've been breaking out, but I think that's more horm hormonal related. I don't think it's from any of these. Yeah, and the packaging's so cute. The price is pretty good. Yeah. I just think they're so good. Yeah, for, like really impressed. Bosha is a brand that we've, oh, our dogs, they're going crazy. Bosch is a brand that we've enjoyed in the past, but I haven't been blown away as much mm -mm. as these serums. Yeah. I just think they're so good. And we generally don't really go to events because we, you guys know, like we have Daya, we have full-time jobs, we have so much going on. Um, and we saw that they were launching these and we're like, oh, that actually sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. We should go. And it was actually so fun. Yeah, it was really so we fun. we were really glad that we went. Yeah, it was a great time. Okay, and the next up, we don't have it here because we ate them all already, but um, they are the Lemon Kit Kats. They're seasonal for spring. They're like the mini ones that you would get to like fill up a candy dish. Yeah, we can link them down below on the Target website, but we love lemon treats mm -hmm. so much, and it's kind of the best part of spring for us because spring is not one of our favorite seasons. No, it's not as bad as summer, but it's just not. Yeah, I actually prefer summer over spring. I feel like spring's so oh, awkward, really? but... Anyways, usually a lot of companies launch like carrot cake or lemon flavored things, which we love both of those. Yeah. So that was really exciting when we saw those Kit Kats and we devoured the bag. Like they are gone. They're so good. And it's nice that they're small. So it's like a little it's sweet treat you can nice put in your sweet purse. treat. If you like sweets like us, try them out. You can get them at Target. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one is also very exciting, honestly. So you guys know we love Nespresso. We love our machine. We love going to the store mm -hmm. every Friday to get new pods. And um, they have a line of, well, okay, so they used to be called like vanille, um, caramel, and then hazelnut. That was mm -hmm. like the three yeah. names. Um, and so they're kind of like their everyday coffee creations. Um, so they have like a natural flavor to them. Yeah, and um, isn't it the Melozio base? Yeah, but it's the Melozio base, add, but they add the flavors. And like Melozio is one of our favorites. Mm -hmm. um, and we liked them, but we never loved them. Like we tried them and they were a little acidic, not very smooth. Mm -hmm. So then we kind of switched to the Melozio, um, the Cuba ones. Um, Those are like the, the two. Well, yeah, because then we just really loved all the seasonal. All the seasonal oh, offerings. So good. I miss mm -hmm. them. I miss them. We should have talked to more. I know. Anyways. But we were there a couple weeks ago, and the guy said that they transitioned all those three flavors into new, less acidic, smoother flavors. And, and they renamed them. It's and so they cute. renamed them. The caramel became caramel cookie. This, no, no, caramel cookie. It's so good now. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. I didn't like the hazelnut, I like actually hated before. I thought it was okay, and then we got a sleeve of it, yeah. and I'm like, this is crap. So yeah. I haven't tried the new one yet, but we did get the vanilla custard pie. Yeah, which is such a cuter name than just vanilla. It, is. it like makes you want 
to eat it. It recall? is. And then the caramel cookie, but this has been our favorite. It's almost like more butterscotchy, I feel. Yeah. Like maybe it's like the cookie part. But I think the biggest thing, like he said in the store, which it just go in there if you have one yeah. machine because they are the best salespeople. They just help you so much. But how they're so much more balanced now, I think that's just true because before you would get like kind of like a really sweet taste and then it would go to like a bitter taste yeah. and it just was kind of all over the place and these are so smooth and balanced. So good. So we highly recommend them and the vanilla custard pie but this one has just been our favorite. Mm -hmm. So go check them out if you didn't know that they rebranded these. Okay thank you guys so much for watching and we hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you next week.